Both Valve and Nintendo were recently the subject of hacks, which has us thinking, why are video games constantly getting hacked? Okay, well, they're not constantly getting hacked, but they seem to get hacked much more often than any other industry out there. Sure, it might have something to do with the fact that a hacker is most likely also a hardcore gamer, but there must be more to it than that. Usually, these hackers have something to prove and just want to show video game developers that their games are far from secure. We'll discuss all this and even talk about some patent leaks for the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and how they could be detrimental to both Sony and Microsoft. But let's kick things off by talking about the two most recent hacks, beginning with Valve. Valve is one of the best video game developers in the world. They've developed the Half-Life, Team Fortress, Counter-Strike, and Portal series, as well as Dota 2. Oh, and yeah, they created Steam, so that just shows you how good Valve is at this whole video game thing. The thing is, maybe their games aren't as secure as they think, because just recently, the source code for both Counter-Strike Global Offensive and Team Fortress 2 leaked online and was put on torrent sites. If you know anything about programming, then you know that you could do a whole lot with the source code, and if it gets into the wrong hands, it could be disastrous. Doing something as simple as logging into CSGO or TF2 and being on the same server as a hacker could dangerously expose your account and even computer. So having the source code go public put Valve in a horrible position. Immediately after Valve learned about the leak, they started an investigation and advised players to stay off of CSGO and TF2 until they found out what's going on. But luckily, it didn't take long for them to realize what had happened. It turns out that the leaked source code was just a reposting of a limited CSGO engine code depot Valve released to partners in late 2017. And this leak was actually from all the way back in 2018. For that reason, Valve gave players the green light, and said that they shouldn't be alarmed or avoid current builds of the game. If they want to play, they can. All they need to do is just make sure they're on official servers for max security. Other than that, they have nothing to worry about. But it was definitely a scare, and let us know that no game is safe from hackers and leakers. Even before this whole source code debacle, there was another hack that happened involving Nintendo. Nintendo admitted that over 160,000 Nintendo accounts have been hacked since the beginning of April. Yeah, that's a whole lot of accounts. These hackers used login ID and password information obtained illegally and seemed to have impersonated the Nintendo Network ID to get into the Nintendo accounts of others. Just to make things clear, an NNID is used to make purchases on the Wii U and 3DS and a Nintendo account is needed to make purchases on the Switch. Many players have both accounts linked, so they could combine eShop funds across both devices. It's a smart thing to do, but clearly using an NNID to log in isn't very secure and hackers took full advantage of it. After these events, Nintendo decided to abolish logging in through an NNID, and will reset passwords for all accounts that were affected. If your account was compromised, you'll have received an email from Nintendo with instructions. Hopefully, this will help make Nintendo accounts more secure moving forward. Now, the fact that someone was able to hack into Nintendo accounts is absolutely horrible, but the repercussions extend beyond just Nintendo accounts. Some of us have our PayPal accounts linked to our Nintendo accounts to make purchases. If you're one of those people, then you should definitely check it out and make sure your PayPal account wasn't compromised either. Also, if you're the type to have the same password on multiple accounts, including online banking, then you should definitely go and reset them because it'll help in events like these. It's always better to be safe than sorry. But you know who never feels sorry? The hackers themselves. To them, this is just fun and games. It's a way for them to show the world how good they are at their craft, and they don't care who or what they hurt in the process. So why do these hackers tend to target the video game industry? Well, there's two main reasons for that. Firstly, in general, video games and gaming sites typically don't have a high level of web security. Oftentimes, these companies create games and websites on a budget, so they don't put as much into security as they could, because they either don't have the cash to do so, or think it's unnecessary. It's also possible that the website host doesn't put a high premium on security, or that the gaming company may fail to implement very basic security features to protect the site from a whole slew of different online attacks. Heck, even if the site rolls out plenty of security updates, it's ultimately up to the administrators to update software and maintain security. If they don't do that, then it's easy pickings for hackers, and your data could be at risk. 
Secondly, like we touched on earlier, hackers don't necessarily want to hack into your Nintendo, PSN, or Xbox Live account to buy games. What they really want is your email and password, because with those two credentials in hand, they could do a lot of damage. Once these hackers figure out your email and password, they'll start plugging them into other websites to see if they can log in and steal more information, like your PayPal account or even your bank account. This is why it's recommended to use a different password with every account you have and a password manager so you never forget any of them. It's also advised to use two-factor authorization whenever it's offered to you. This will make it very difficult for those on unrecognized devices to log into your account since it requires them to have your phone number as well and plug in a unique code. While these are the two main reasons why hackers tend to attack the video game industry specifically, we think there's another reason why this keeps happening. What do you think of when you think of a hacker? Do you think of some hooded dude with a dope computer rig who plays video games? It's kind of the stereotype. It's this whole idea of hackers typically being hardcore gamers that could explain why they target the video game industry specifically. Hardcore gamers are usually really into computers, tech, gadgets, and all the really fun stuff. In fact, some of them are so into it that they know the ins and outs of everything, and even become expert hackers capable of getting into anything. If this is the case, then the first thing they'll want to hack into are those video games they've loved since day one to show those developers who's boss. It usually starts off with a hacker just wanting to take advantage of a game, but the next thing they know, they've completely lost who they are and have fallen down the hacking rabbit hole. They take things up a notch and become like Lulzsack and Xbox Underground. Almost all of the members of those groups spent some time in prison or suffered an even worse fate. We're sure you remember the PlayStation Network outage of 2011, right? It was a very dark time for Sony. Over 77 million accounts were compromised, and PSN's service was down for 23 days. Lulzsack was the group who hacked into PSN and caused this whole debacle, and everyone in that group is now either in prison or participating in community service. As for Xbox Underground, those guys went on an insane hacking spree that started with simply trying to understand the inner workings of the Xbox and turned into stealing Xbox 360s and even hacking into a US military server. We made a whole video about the group, so we recommend taking a look at it, but only after you finish this one, of course. Well, it's a little too soon for the PS5 and Xbox Series X to get hacked, and we sure hope they never do. There have been so many patent leaks that we don't even know where to start. Pretty much everything that was leaked involves the PS5 though, so Microsoft must have a bit tighter security than Sony. Now, these leaks are definitely less dangerous than hacks and other major leaks since they don't put anyone's accounts or personal information in danger, but they could still be detrimental to the company. How so? Well, did you hear about Sony's microtransaction patent? Yeah, it really rubbed gamers the wrong way. Essentially, the patent makes it seem like Sony wants to offer player-specific in-game solutions in their games, which could involve simple tips and tricks to help you out, but also microtransactions. If you're stuck at a boss, you could ask the console how to beat the boss. The AI will recognize that you're struggling and come up with tips that could help you with prompts like 75% of players like you defeated the boss using resource X. That's not horrible, but the main problem is that it would also ask you if you want to purchase Resource X, so you could defeat the boss easier. Obviously, this gave Sony some negative publicity, and since this is just a patent leak, there's a chance that this AI won't actually be a part of the PS5. So it's possible that this negative publicity is all for nothing. The same thing goes for an earlier DualSense patent. Supposedly, a patent leak made it seem like the controller was going to be chock full of biosensors capable of determining our sweat level and heart rate. Gamers weren't happy at the time, but thankfully it turned out to be a lie. Not only would it have increased the price of the controller tremendously, but it would have been pretty unnecessary and kind of weird for something like a controller to know all that information. That's for our watches to know. Even the possible design of the console was revealed through two different patent leaks. Sony filed a patent on the dev kit designs of the PS5, which is something console developers typically don't do. This has many people thinking that the final design of the PS5 will look a lot like the dev kits they sent developers. Another design shows the PS5 looking a lot like a beefier PS4 instead of having the more wild V-shaped design of the dev kit. Only time will tell what the console will actually look like, but we doubt it'll look like either of those designs. Expect something similar to the Xbox Series X's computer tower design. What we do know is what the heatsink inside the PS5 will look like, and it's very similar to the Xbox Series X's. The patent for the part just went public, and it's going to be a thick old boy, that's for sure. Supposedly, it's capable of optimally cooling the console without dramatically transforming the console's shape, which is really all we want in a heatsink. 
As we mentioned earlier, no major Microsoft patents have been leaked, as far as we know, but their Xbox Series X logo might have recently leaked, and it looks pretty good, but that's not a major game-changing thing. It's just a logo. As for pricing, it seems like both consoles will be around $500. The PS5 is rumored to possibly be around 550 bucks, but the Xbox Series X seems to be set at about 500. Again, none of this is confirmed. It's all tech insiders who get their hands on this information and share it with the world. But if the Xbox Series X could undercut the PS5, that could potentially cause players to switch allegiances, which is only good news for Microsoft. The console wars are shaping up to be a doozy. And that's why we think video game developers and companies keep getting hacked. What do you think? Is there another reason to explain why this keeps happening that we didn't touch upon? Let us know in the comment section down below, and please don't forget to subscribe to The Gamer for more gaming videos. As always, thanks so much for watching.